Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial video, we're going to be looking at dealing with collisions. So as we identified in the last video, um, we had an issue whereby uh, we've created our maze, but our character can walk through walls. So that's a bit of an issue. So I'm just demonstrating that on the screen. So we don't want that. Okay. So um, the other issue that I also identified was my character was moving a bit more, a bit too slowly for my liking for this game. So I'm going to show you very, very quickly how to change that speed. Um, it's a very straightforward process. And then we're going to look at dealing with um, what happens when our player collides with the wall. So let's first look at the uh, increase in the speed of my character. So I'm going to click back onto my workspace. So I've got two tabs up here. This is my room view and this is my workspace view. So I'm going to click back onto my workspace and I'm going just to uh, make sure that I've, uh, I'm not causing issues. I'm just going to minimize my sprites and I'm going to open up my player object. So I'm just going to double click it. So I'm looking over here. Okay. Okay. So these are the pieces of code that we've got so far. So we've got up, down, left and right. So I'm going to open up each of these. Okay. And you can see they open up their own tabs running across the top. So remember this number here. Okay. This number with my number two, that, uh, that identifies how fast my character is moving. So how, uh, how many pixels it moves in any given direction. So at the moment, whilst I keep the, um, X key down, sorry, while I keep, while I keep the, um, the left arrow key down, sorry, um, that's moving two pixels every, um, game frame. So to make it move faster, I need to increase this number. So I'm going to change that to a five. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, my up key. I'm going to change that to a five. Same thing with the right key. I'm going to change that to a five. And the same thing with the down key. Okay, change that to a five. Okay, so um, let's go back into game. So I'm going to run the game and see what change that has made or what impact that has made. Now that is much better. So my character is moving much more quickly around the maze. Um, because that would uh, lead to a little bit of pr a player frustration, I think, uh, because the character was moving so slowly. Again, that is another thing that could be included in testing. Is the speed of the character appropriate? And um, you could get feedback from other users on that, about whether you think that um, the speed is maybe too fast or too slow, um, and make the changes to the game, documenting those changes. Remember, the documentation is really, really important uh, when you come to do the controlled assessment. Um, so you have to document everything you do, everything you change, any issues that you find. So that's the first thing dealt with then. So let's have a look at these collisions with the walls. So the first thing I want to do is to open up my um, wall object. So looking at the wall, so as I open up objects, by the way, they are displayed on the same screen. So I can move around by using the thumb wheel, okay, and um, holding that down the center click, and I can drag and look at different areas of my uh, my window, or I can click and drag on individual windows uh, to move them about, okay? So there are those options available to you. But I wanna look at the properties of the wall. So you can see that we've got the object, we've got that object name, we've got the sprite, we have something called collision mask, which we're going to look at in another video um, a little bit later. Um, and then we've got this area here where it's looking at, um, we've got a couple of checkboxes. We've got um, whether or not the object is visible, whether it's persistent. That means that does it stay uh, in every single level? Okay. Now we are going to be looking at persistent objects and those are going to be more to do with um, dealing with the scores and the lives. Um, so we will look at persistent objects, but for this uh, uh, object, it is not going to be persistent because they're going to change uh, in each level. Um, whether or not the object is going to be solid uh, on whether it uses physics, that's things like if you were on a platform game, um, if it was used in physics, as you fell, um, it, you, you fall with gravity. So you increase speed as you fall the further distance. Um, we're not going to be using physics in the games that we create um, in this tutorial. We've also got events, which is open at the moment here. We've got parents. We're not be dealing with physics and variable definitions. We are going to be looking using parents a little bit later when we come to look at monsters, um, but or enemies. Um, but those are the uh, the properties of the object. So um, I'm sure you can see that we've got a section here for solid. We want to make that wall solid. Okay. 
So I'm going to click this solid button. So I'm looking here, okay, just in case you can't see it. Okay, solid. And I'm going to just tick that box. Now you'll think straight away, rah, brilliant, that wall's now solid. So when I play my game, it's going to stop me walking through it. Let's have a look. Okay, so we're walking around, walking around, walking around. Oh, well, why is it doing that? Because the wall is solid. Why, why, am, I, why am I not stopped walking through that wall? Why, why can I still do that? Well, the reason for that is we haven't um, told GameMaker what happens when we collide with the wall. Okay, so what we need to do is to check whether the, uh, the player object is in collision with the wall. Okay, and that's a really, really easy thing to do. I'm going to close the game down. So we're going to look now at adding an extra event in our object for our player object. So I'm going to add an event. And one of the events that we've got here is a collision detection. Okay, so we're going to go collision, objects, and we're going to check whether or not the object, the player object, is colliding with the wall. Okay, now you'll say, well, you could do that in, this, in the same thing here. You could check whether the wall and the player are colliding down here. Um, there's a reason why we don't do it this way. Okay, so we could do that. Okay, there's a reason why we don't do that. And that, the reason for that is because we only got one instance of our player. So it's more um, efficient for us to check whether or not the object, the player object, is colliding with the wall than checking every single wall tile. So that because that uses a processing power. So we always have to look at what uses the least amount of processing power when we're dealing with uh, with collisions and uh, and coding in games. So because there's only one player object, we're only going to we only need to check for a collision with that object with any wall tile. Okay, not the other way around. Otherwise, you'd have 500 wall tiles constantly checking if the if the player is is colliding. So we do it the other way. So we're going to add an event here. We're going to add collision objects and we're going to check to see whether or not the player is colliding with the wall okay don't forget wherever you can make sure that you uh, use um, the comments to help you so checking for collision with the wall okay there's there's no code associated with this so that's absolutely fine. We don't need to uh, to um, add any code because all it's doing is to check for the collision. And if it is if it is a collision, it then applies this solid um, object to the wall. So let's check that out. So no coding. We're just checking for the collision. So let's preview our game and let's move about. And now when I hit the wall, boom, stops moving straight away. Okay, so now we've got a situation where we are now constrained within the game window. We can't move outside of the game window, and when we collide with the wall, um, we stop moving. Okay, so that's dealing with collisions. The other thing I would just want to quickly cover with you is um, before we before I close this uh, this tutorial video down um, is when you're checking for issues in your game. So. If I run my game again, I shouldn't have done that, should I? I should just let it run in. If I run my game again, you can see at the top here, I've got quite a narrow piece of wall and my count is quite big. So I might want to check a certain piece of the maze to make sure that my character can fit there. Well, what I don't really want to do is be moving the, the character all around the maze. So what I can do is go back onto my room, move my character where I want to test, okay, and then run my game. My character now appears in the top, so I can check to see whether or not uh, there's enough space allocated there. There is, he can move, so that's absolutely fantastic, okay? So that's just a quick and easy way of uh, doing some, some testing of your maze. You can move your characters around. It's, it's very handy when you want to check things like um, like doors and things like that and entries to the next levels um, to make sure that they work and they go to the right place. So um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at um, creating monsters. Uh, or enemies for our, for our uh, character um, and um, giving them some some movement okay so I'll see you in the next video